Hey, my name is Eric, and in today's video, we're doing a review of Grammarly versus Pro Writing Aid. Now, my guess is that you're watching this video because you want to figure out is Grammarly worth it for the extra cost? Because what we're looking at on screen right here is the yearly subscription plus. The plus just means that there is a plagiarism check added to Pro Writing Aid. So that's going to run you $69.03, roughly $5.75 a month if you go with the annual plan. They do offer this lifetime plus as well if you want to go that route. But if you're looking at Grammarly, that same exact plan if you do an annual is 12 bucks. So roughly about $6.25 extra a month for Grammarly. Now, I will tell you right off the bat that I do think it's worth it. And I think by the end of this review, you will agree with me as well. Now, before we get started with the review, I do want to make a couple of disclaimers. In the description below are links. They're affiliate links. So if you use my links, I do earn a commission from that. But part of the reason I want to tell you about that, besides my own greed, is that I want to let you know that that commission is the same either way. So I don't have any incentive to steer you to one service over the other. Now, let's get into the actual tools themselves and do a side-by-side -side example of why I think Grammarly is more effective. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to look up the average reading level in America. So it says seventh to eighth grade. And the reason for that is I wanted to find a piece of writing that was about average. So I went back here and I ended up going to Google searching examples of eighth grade writing. Ended up on this uh, website here. Looks like some sort of school district out somewhere. And this first writing sample here, the next thing I did was I tried to copy and paste this into Grammarly, which I couldn't. So I had to write it word for word into the Grammarly tool. So when you take this piece of writing and you put it into Grammarly, what you're going to see right off the bat is that there are 27 suggestions on how this writing can be improved. Now, if you compare that to what we see over here on Pro Writing Aid, in the upper left hand corner, you can see that there are 10 suggestions. So that's a pretty big difference when you have more than double the amount of suggestions, almost triple. Now, the reason for that is with Pro Writing Aid, it's mostly looking for grammars and typo, where if we go back to Grammarly, on the right-hand side, you can see that that's what's being uh, mentioned here for correctness, but then it does a lot with clarity. So there's 11 different issues on here with clarity and a little bit of issue with engagement and then delivery of the writing piece itself. The other thing too that you probably uh, notice right away is that if you're looking at this, the layout is a lot cleaner on Grammarly. So what they do is they make the writing the focus and they kind of give you all of your suggestions and then you can just work through them quickly on the sidebar here. And then if you want to do anything down here as far as formatting, you have that available as well. But if we go back to Pro Writing Aid, in my opinion, they give you way too many things to look at as soon as you're on the board here. So maybe if you're really, really into writing, there might be something in here that I might be missing. Uh, but to me, what I'm looking for is a tool that can take my writing, analyze it, make it smoother, make it better, and be able to do it quickly. So why don't we go back to Grammarly because I think it's a little bit more interesting if you're looking at things such as clarity. Because correctness, we all understand. That's stuff that pops up even on a Google Doc spell checker or if you're using a Word doc or anything like that. But if we just show uh, clarity issues, these are the ones uh, underlined in blue, you'll see that it's saying right here that this uh, sentence may be considered wordy, consider changing the wording. So we can one click this, and then just like that, we can take this uh, entire paragraph, this text here, and be able to reduce it down quite a bit. Now I believe that it was at 164 words before. So what I can do very quickly, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm just gonna go with their uh, suggestions here. Uh, is I can whittle down this writing uh, and be able to get it to uh, be a little bit more concise. So it appears that the man was maybe unnecessary in the sentence, consider removing it. So again, just one clicking this. So that quickly I've gone from 164 words, hopefully my memory is correct, down to 148. And we have a much more concise piece of writing. So with Pro Writing Aid, that's something that's not really available to you because it's really just looking at the typos. So the next thought I had was, what does this look like if I put this same piece of writing into a Google Doc? Like how does Pro Writing Aid compare to just a free service like the grammar and typos on Google Doc? So we count these up real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different issues that were found on this Google Doc and only 10 on Pro Writing Aid. So that to me is a pretty big red flag. And one of the last ones here, the last issue that it came up with is this sentence here, which is kind of a weird sentence, but keep in mind it's written by an eighth grader, but it's, it's piggybacking off of the last sentence. And it says one, if that person is into whatever the story's about. So this right here, the story's about, it, it's a little bit like kind of slang. Really it should say stories are about. So I can one click this and fix that issue. Now going back to Grammarly, or excuse me, uh, Pro Writing Aid, you will not see any issues with that sentence whatsoever, even though it's a pretty awkward sentence. Now, if we go to Grammarly and we go to all suggestions, 
what it does is it goes a little bit further than what you saw with Google Docs where it just said, you know what, you should throw in the R about. And this is saying the delivery is slightly off. So in this particular case, if we click here, it's saying the preposition at the end of a sentence and that this is creating an issue and it's odd for the reader. So if you want a little bit more, you can click here and it'll pop open, you know, different examples of what a preposition at the end of the sentence looks like. But I like this the best because it's saying like, hey, just adding that stories are about is still off a little bit. Uh, so the delivery is slightly off. So I think just this quick example shows you the difference between Grammarly, Pro Writing Aid, and even a free service like Google Docs. So in my opinion, I believe that Grammarly has a lot more funds that are available to invest back into the tool. We are kind of looking at the UI and UX of the two tools. And again, looking at that, I just think it's a lot cleaner on Grammarly where it looks a little bit messy here on Pro Writing Aid. And I also want to talk about this right here. This is really valuable, especially if you write content online. I used to manage a blog at a company that got about a quarter million visitors per month on the blog. And one of the things that I came across was that the amount of characters that you're putting in a line should be reduced. So in this particular case, you can see that there's a lot going on here. And I'm going to copy and paste this back into Grammarly because I've made some edits on here. So if I paste that same exact uh, story right here, what you're going to see is that the first line ends with, and there are some people. But if we go back over here, you can see that it says, and there are some people who don't like horror stories. So these extra words right here is actually creating more clutter. And the actual uh, line spacing here, in my opinion, is too tight as well. And if you go back to Grammarly, it's more spaced out. So I used to run tests on the blog that I had at work. And one of the things I found was that if you increase the spacing between the lines and you reduce the amount of characters per line, it makes it more readable for people. So when you're writing for people, especially online, it's not just about the grammar and the flow of the communication, but it's also how it's actually structured on the page. And I also made the font size a little bit bigger as well. And I made the color of the font darker. And what I found from looking at Google Analytics was that my average time on page started to increase. It wasn't substantial, like something like three to 5%, but just by making those tweaks, I was able to make my writing more readable for the user. So in my opinion, the fact that Grammarly was founded three years earlier and it's a more successful tool, they've been able to invest more funds into the tool to make it more effective. A good example of this is that Grammarly has developed an app both on the Google Play and Apple app stores. So if you're writing a lot of work emails from your phone, you can actually get some uh, helpful advice from your phone as well in the app. Uh, where Pro Writing Aid does not have an app currently. And another example is that Grammarly has developed a tool specifically for businesses so that you can have a style guide and a tone. And this is really helpful because then you can have a style guide and a certain tone to your writing so that it's consistent if somebody might've dealt with one employee on one support ticket and then a different employee on a different support ticket. So again, guys, I appreciate you using my links in the description below. And what you'll find on the screen right here is a more robust review of Grammarly that really gets into how you can write more confidently with the service. All right, guys, I'll catch you in that next video.